In this tutorial, we're going to look at the select clause in detail. So since our current database is SQL store, to clean things up, I'm going to remove the first statement. We don't really need it now. Also, I'm going to delete these two comments. We just want to focus on the select clause. All right. So what can we do with this select clause? Well, in the last tutorial, you learned that if we use an asterisk, this will return all the columns. Alternatively, we can specify the columns that we want. And this is helpful in situations where you have a big table with so many columns and perhaps millions of records. If you want to bring back all that data, that's going to put a lot of pressure on the database server, in this case, MySQL, as well as the network. So that's when we explicitly specify the columns that we want to get. Let's say we want to get the first name and last name columns. Execute the query. As you can see, we only get these two columns and they're in the same order we specified here. So if we change the order and put the last name first and execute the query again, now you can see the last name column comes first. Now let's add a new column to the end. Let's get the points for each customer as well. Run the query. So these are the points for each customer, which are calculated based on their shopping. Now, let's say we want to get these points and put them in a mathematical formula to calculate the discount that we can give to each customer. So here we can use an arithmetic expression. Let's say points plus 10. This is an arithmetic expression. So now if you execute this query, for the first record, you can see that their points will end up being 2283. Let's run the query one more time. There you go. Now we can put the original points column here for clarity. So points, comma, points plus 10. Let's run the query one more time. Now you can see the original points and next to that you can see the value that we're going to use to calculate the discount. Now here we're using the plus operator which is for addition. We also have multiplication, division, subtraction, and modulo which is the remainder of the division. So let's change this to something more complex. Let's say we want to get the points multiplied by 10 and then add 100 to it. Now you can immediately see that this line one is getting too long and it doesn't fit on the screen. In situations like this, you can break up the select clause by placing each column on a new line. So select last name, then first name, points, and finally points times 10 plus 100. So let's execute this query one more time. So this is our new column with the new calculated value. Now, one thing you need to understand in this arithmetic expression is the order of operators. And this is based on the order of operators in math. So in math, the multiplication and division operators have higher order or higher precedence than addition and subtraction. So in this expression, first points is multiplied by 10, and then the result is added to 100. Now, if this is not what you want, you can always change the order by using parentheses. As an example, let's change this multiplication to addition and then put that multiplication here. In this expression, first 10 is multiplied by 100 and then the result is added to the points. Now, let's say this is not what we want. So we can change the order by using parentheses here. With this parentheses, first we get the points, add 10 to them, and then multiply the result by 100. So these parentheses are useful for changing the order of operations as well as adding clarity to our code. So someone else reading this code can easily understand the order of these operations. Now let's execute this query one more time. All right, now look at the name of this column here. It's set to the expression that we have on line five. That doesn't quite make sense. We wanna have a clear descriptive name. So we can give this column an alias using the as keyword. So as, and then we give it a name like discount, discount underline factor. Let's run the query again. Now the name of this column is changed. So this is the benefit of using an alias. We can give descriptive names to the columns and the result set. Now, if you want to have a space in the column name, you need to surround it with quotes, either single or double quotes. So we put quotes here and then we can add a space in between these two words. Let's execute the query one more time. Now we've got discount factor. So let's quickly recap everything you learned about the select clause. 
We can use an asterisk to return all the columns, or we can explicitly specify the columns that we want to return. We can also use arithmetic expressions here, and optionally, we can give an alias to each column in the result set. Now, there is one more thing you need to know about the select clause. So let's delete this query and select the state column from the customer's table. Take a look. These are the states in which our customers are located. Now, currently in this sample data, we don't have any duplicates. In other words, we don't have multiple customers in any of these states. But for this demo, I want to change the state of the first customer to Virginia. So we end up with duplicates in the result set. So let's open up the Navigator panel. Here's our customers table. Let's look at all the data. And here's our first customer, as you can see, is located in the state of Massachusetts. Now I want to change this to Virginia. So double click VA for Virginia, enter, done. Now on the bottom right corner of the screen, you should see two buttons, apply and revert. Unfortunately, I cannot show you these buttons because the recording window is a bit smaller than MySQL Workbench. But look down the bottom, in the bottom right corner, click on Apply. You're going to see a dialog box like this asking you to review the changes. So go ahead and click the Apply button one more time. All right, beautiful. Now, let's go back to our first query window and execute this query one more time. As you can see, the first two customers are located in Virginia. What if you want to get the unique list of states in the result set? That's when we use the distinct keyword. So select distinct state. With this query, we'll retrieve the unique list of states from the customer's table. So with the distinct keyword, we can remove the duplicates. Let's execute the query one more time. Now you can see Virginia is not duplicated. All right, here's an exercise for you. I want you to write a SQL query to return all the products in our database. In the result set, I want to see three columns, name, unit price, and a new column called new price, which is based on this expression, unit price times 1.1. So let's say we want to increase the price of each product by 10%. With this query, we want to get all the products, their original price, and their new price. So pause the video and spend one or two minutes on this exercise. When you're done, come back, see my solution. All right, this is pretty easy. So we start with select. Now, what columns do you want to select? Name, unit, underline price. And then here we're going to use an arithmetic expression to calculate the new price. So we type out unit price times 1.1 and then give it an alias. So as new underline price, or we could put this in quotes and put a space between new and price. Now, where do we want to select these columns from? From the products table. So from products. Note that I've used uppercase characters for all the SQL keywords and lowercase characters for everything else. So let's go ahead and execute this query. This is what we get. So these are all the products you can see their original price, as well as the new price, which is 10% more expensive. 